Excuse me again for my uh, cold. <laughs> I apologize about that. Um, let's. Uh, here's what we're going to do. So the first thing I wanted to do was I just wanted to show you guys who might not – who. okay, first question. Who here has uh, never taken an actual C++ class? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six out of about 15. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you a, a tiny little project on pointers. And if that's all you really cared about from the class, then you can leave. I don't care if you come and go. Um, it's uh, completely up to you uh, when you take when you when you head in uh, head out if you want to. I'll be here for like an hour or so uh, to do some stuff. What I'm going to do, I'm going to first show you like straight off the bat a couple little things on pointers, and we're going to then talk about. Uh, a silly little class called fraction, which is just we're going to build a fraction class straight from uh, like nothing on the screen. Okay, so it'll kind of build you up and say, uh, here's what we could do if we wanted to create a program all by ourselves that had a class in it. Okay, does that make sense? And again, if this is if you took Comp 11 and you're like, oh, this is like way below what I'm used to, then then uh, uh, you can certainly uh, you don't have to stick around uh, at all if you don't want to. <coughs> so. Here's what I'd like you to do. What I've done so far is I have opened up uh, Eclipse on my computer. You can open up, um, there's some other folding chairs over here if you guys don't have chairs. And chairs over here if you want, or in the back. Um, if you don't want to use Eclipse and you want to use some other editor, go right ahead. Just have things in a folder that, uh, that where, you can, where you can get to on the homework server so that you can use Clang++ to actually <laughs> run it. If you can't get that to work, then um, no worries either. Okay? Any questions before we get going? All right. So the first thing I want to do, let's do this first. And if you're on the, the network and it's a little slow, I apologize. This, this looks a little bit sluggish to me right now too. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do new and then a, oh no, a C++ project. Okay, if I can get this to work here. And there we go. C++ project. Hopefully you got that. Uh, if you don't, I can wait and maybe Vivek can, can help out a little bit. Um, Vivek has told me that he's not a huge, huge fan of, C of Eclipse, but we won't hold that against him too much. Um, and then for the project name, let's just call this pointer underscore project. And you can do this, if you're doing this in a regular text editor, you don't need to do any of this, just kind of hang out for a minute. I'm going to select the Linux GCC and then next. Okay. And then I'm going to hit Advanced Settings. And all I'm going to do, the, the only thing I'm going to do for this project is set it up so that we use this Clang compiler. Right? So you go to C, C++, Build. And then when that comes up, I hit the little, the little arrow next to C, C++, Build. And it looks like it's doing its thing. And then I'm going to go to Settings. Okay? And under Settings, this didn't take forever, it would come up. And I'm just gonna, where it says GCCC++ compiler, when that finally comes up, I'm just gonna type Clang++ instead of G++. Okay. When this comes up. And I've, I've generally found that in this building, the EECS network is the fastest, but it doesn't look like it's particularly fast right now. So, um, so we will go from there. If you do want to download the download the programs and you want to look at them, go to the class webpage and the first link on there is uh, is the one you want. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what happened here. I think I clicked another button. I believe I just want to go to tool settings. Yes, tool settings and then Clang plus plus and then the other one we have to change is the linker down here. Max, what are you doing here? Going to help out? All right. And then we have the same thing with Clang++ plus plus for the linker. Hit OK. You don't have OK. You can probably hit Return, and it'll be fine. And some stuff will happen. And then this just, and then hit Finish. And that just sets up a regular brand new project for us. OK? What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the whole program just in one uh, one pro uh, file right now, which for the most part is okay, 
um, for this kind of tiny little things. I just wanted to, like I said, show you the pointers and how we can deal with that. Okay, so if you click on the little uh, pointer project and then do file and new, uh, if it works okay, hang on, there we go, new and new, we're going to do uh, source file. Okay, and it should just give us kind of a blank file here. If we click, uh, we'll call it pointer.cpp. This is actually slower than I expected. Not, not happy about that. Okay, pointer.cpp. And then we hit finish, and then that should come up, and hopefully it won't be too sluggish after it comes up. And it should give us basically pointer.cpp uh, normally it opens up for us. If it doesn't, you'll have to click on it. But I thought it was going to open up for us over here. Tough Spark is as much faster for me. I think Tough Spark. What's that? Tough Secure is good. I, you know, I found I found you know different ones, but maybe I'll switch to the other one. I don't know if I can just switch without it screwing up. But for right now, this should this should do. <clears throat> okay, so here's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm just going to type some some code for you and as I type it I'll kind of explain what's going on the first thing we do is um, type include which says hey we're gonna use some functionality from the C++ language and in this case IO stream just means we're gonna use like input output so we can print stuff to the screen okay I'm also gonna type um, using namespace STD semicolon and that basically says, hey, you can compress some of the, some of the uh, keystrokes. You don't have to use as many words for some of these things. Don't stress about the details of that. And then I'm going to write two functions. The first function I'm going to write is called is going to be called bad swap. Okay? Did you guys do swapping functions in uh, C++ at all? Did you a couple of them? Did you do them with pointers? Well, let's see what happens here, okay? Bad swap, I'm going to have int A and then int B, okay? And I'm just going to put a little curly bracket. Can everybody see up here the, the, the font big enough? Okay. And in there, I'm going to put uh, a fairly simple swap routine, and I'm going to say int temp equals A, A equals B, B equals temp. And that's the whole function. Okay, and then I'm going to do another function, and by the way, if some of these words like void, what does that mean? It just means that we're not actually expecting anything back from the function <laughs> that's going to be delivered back to us. That's all it means. Yeah, Greta. Wait, sorry, you said this code is all on the website? The code is on the website, right at the, on, the, on the home page, right at the top, there's a little zip file, and you can probably download that, open it up, and then copy and paste into whatever editor you're using. If not, you can follow along. I mean, I'm typing it as slow as I... I don't think I'm typing it too, too fast. What's that? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I mean, you can probably catch up pretty quickly. This is not, not that much stuff here so far. If not, we can watch. But, okay. Now I'm going to do a good swap. Okay. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in these things called pointers, which we designate with a star. Okay, int star a and int star b, and these integers are just uh, numbers, basically, numbers that can't have decimals. Okay, and the good swap and bad swap is going to be like this. It's going to say int temp equals star a, star a equals star b, and star b equals temp. Okay. And that's the whole function there. Okay? That's good swap and bad swap. Okay, I'll let you guys catch up while I close the door. Okay. Now. Let's do 
we're going to do a main function, which just is, a, is the beginning part of our function, for those who haven't taken C++ before. It's the first thing that gets run in any program. Okay, And if we do int main, which is the name of the function, and then curly braces. And the nice thing about C++, uh, Eclipse, by the way, is it puts the little, well, if it wasn't too slow, it puts the little curly brace in for you. So you don't have to remember to do that, which is kind of nice. Okay, int main, and then we're going to create a little array, kind of like what we did in class today, except we're going to create an array that has only five elements in it. And this is how you do this in, in C++, by the way. You put, you put int a bracket five equals, and then uh, it's a bunch of numbers, 12, 5, 3, 2, 8, let's say. Okay, you need a semicolon after that. And... If we do C out, which says, hey, print this to the screen, and then these little double less than signs, what did Professor Sheldon call those? He said it was send to. Yeah, basically send the next thing to C out, right? And in this case, let's do this. Let's do C out, and then we'll do in quotes A bracket 3, so that it prints that part out for us explicitly, colon, and then another send to, which is two less than signs, a bracket three, and then backslash n, which says actually go to a new line. All these details you can pick up a little bit later. And then c out, uh, the same thing in print, we're in, in quotes, we're going to do star a plus three, okay, and then a couple more send to's. And then star a plus 3, less than, less than for the send to, and then another like this. And let's be done with it for now. All right. This little yellow guy right here is telling us something. It says no return. If I hover over it, it says no return value, which means we forgot one thing. If you have a, this means returning an integer. If we have, if we're returning an integer, we better say something like return zero, which says, hey, we're going to return something. In this case, it's going to be the number zero, which is fine. <coughs> okay. All right. Yes. Can I just ask if there's any real difference between backslash n and endl? There's, um, the real difference is that nl <laughs> will flush the buffer, which means it will always print immediately. Backslash n sometimes won't. You probably won't ever run into that issue. Okay. But that, that's the big difference. Good okay, now, this program, by the way, we didn't even use our swap functions yet. We're just going to try to test it and run it. In my case, um, I'm just going to hit the little hammer icon up here. Okay, and hopefully this will work. It looks like it, uh, I've almost never in my life written a program that didn't have an error. And in fact, this is one time again where this is... <laughs> Absolutely true. Let me see what else, what the errors are here. Um, let's see. Uh, I have an extra curly brace there. You will quickly find in doing C++ that you can, uh, you'll get errors when you didn't, when you least expect them. The nice thing about Clang++ is it tells you, hey, look, you've got an extraneous closing brace. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay, so I tried to build it again. I hit the little build button again, and maybe I didn't. I think I did. Oh, there it goes. And it should build. And is anybody having trouble building theirs? No? Okay. If you do get it done, I don't know why mine's taking so long. If you do get it done, hit the little <coughs> run button and see what prints out. It should print out A3, which should be A, would actually print out 3 in this case. No, 0, 1, 2, sorry, 2 in this case. I don't know why this is super slow. You said the Tufts wireless is working a little better? Yeah. Okay. All right. <coughs> Maybe... Mine is slow. Anybody else having super slow problems with theirs? No? I'm gonna I'm gonna close mine and go to the other go to the other uh, wireless network. I'll try that. So while I'm doing this, take a look at the two swap functions. One swap function actually passed in these things called pointers, right? 
and the other one passed in regular, just straight up values. That's the big difference between C++ and some other languages. If you pass in values, the values get passed in, but not the connection back, <coughs> excuse me, to where those values actually, um, where those values actually came from. So uh, what that means is, well, we'll find out what it means actually. And let's see. Okay, now I should be on top. Yes. Um, so if you're passing in a pointer, um, it has to you declare it as an integer. What if it's not on the integer? Uh, you can pass in other pointers to other things as well. And you can also pass in other types of things, like a, a floating point value or a character or something like that as well. You can here. <coughs> okay, let me try this. Hopefully this will be a little faster. All right. So those of you who tried it, it when you ran the program, did it actually print out the, the number two twice, hopefully. Okay. So that just shows you two different, the two different ways to actually, um, to actually look at the, uh, to, to reference values in arrays, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, call this function or set a couple of things up so that you can see this swap function and what happens, okay? Int a equals 2, int b equals 3, and what we're going to try to do is actually swap them. Yes, thank you. I'll take the return 0 out. <laughs> Not be good. Or I'll move it down there. Return zero. Okay. Int two equals three and b equals a. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something like c out gets or what did you call it again? Send. Sends is being sent before swap. Okay. And then a colon <coughs> is sent a. And then something like this b is sent B, and then we're going to get a new line. And that's just saying, hey, look, what's A and B beforehand? It should print a 2 and a 3. And then we're going to do the swap. Bad swap first, A comma B. Now, if we look at what the, we'll, we'll see what this prints out, then we'll go analyze what it's doing. C out, uh, let's see, after bad swap, A, same thing, really. You can copy and paste it if you want. B, same thing, that, and then good swap. Now, good swap, you actually have to pass what we call the address of the pointer of the, of the variable. Now, to do that in C++, you use the ampersand, <coughs> and that says, give me the address of that variable, and you're going to send that to good swap. Okay? And you're going to send the address of B to good swap. It's basically saying, here's the original, the, where your, the original values are located so that you can go and individually change those if you want to. Okay? And then finally, C out uh, after good swap, A, A, and then, oops, and then B, B, like that. Okay, now, if this builds properly, sorry, <coughs> I'm in the way. <coughs> if it builds properly, hopefully I have no errors. And then when we run this, what happens is, can't launch, I gotta click, click on the actual pointer project first, and then hit the little run button, which is this one, and, it should, if it works right, print some stuff out here. Okay, so it printed 2, 2, and then it said before swap, A equals 2, B equals 3. After the bad swap, A is still equal to 2, and B equals 3. Hmm, that's, that's why it's a bad swap, because it didn't actually do anything. After the good swap, A equals 3, and B equals 2, which is what we wanted. Okay, now, the question is, why is that the case? Well, if we go back and look at our bad swap, this is, the, this is what we were talking about. When we pass in the actual A, it gets a copy of the variable <coughs> and says, okay, look, you can use this copy of A and you can use this copy of B and do whatever you want, but it never changes the originals. 
Okay? This is where pointers become really handy because if you do want to do this swap through a function, you can do this through the pointers, which is saying, hey, give me the address of A and the address of B, and then you can go and manipulate the originals. Okay? Anyone know what the other way to do this in C++ is? There's one other way. You can actually, yeah, go ahead. Make an array with both values and then modify the array. Oh, you could make an array with both values and modify the array. What I was thinking of, a third way of doing this, and this is actually a little bit more advanced, we'll talk about this later, is using what we call references. So we could call, we could do another function called void good swap to, right? And I hate this syntax because it's kind of like duplication of syntax, but not duplication of what we're doing. If we do int ampersand a, that says I'm going to give you a reference to a, which basically means under the covers a pointer to a, and then int reference b, and then what we're going to do now is we can actually write the swap just like we did in the first case, a equals b, b equals temp, and this one will actually work because these things are called references, which says, oh, I'm not just going to pass you the value, I'm going to pass you the actual behind the scenes real value, like where it's located. So that would actually work. Is there an advantage to using one or the other? References are a little cleaner. References are a little bit uh, easier to deal with because you don't have all these stars everywhere. Okay. References are also more of a C++ way of doing it. If you're going to end up taking comp 40, there is no reference in C, so you can't use them there. So don't get too used to them if you're going to take comp 40. But you're welcome to use them in comp, 11, or comp 15 all you want. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then if we tried this, uh, let's say instead of, we'll just make this good swap two and see if it still runs properly. Yes, I want to save this. Okay. And oops, maybe it's not called good swap two. What did I call it? I did call it good swap two. Goods. Oh, I need to do the. Oh, you're right. Thank you. It needs to just be A and B. You're right. Thank you. Oops. A, B. There we go. And that hopefully will do it. All right. Now, after the good swap two, it still did swap it properly. Okay. Yes. Well. <laughs> Excuse me, references are kind of the, they're like behind the scenes addresses. It's like not the address, so it's not a pointer. And you can't use pointer, but you can't do pointer math on it. It's just as if you said, I get to touch the original value, the original variable. That's all the difference is there. Okay? All right. So that was really all I wanted to do on pointers. Sorry it wasn't too much for you, but that was, uh, that was all I really wanted to cover on pointers. Um, if you look at this, this over, you'll be able to see how the how we actually pass pointers around, and then how you uh, reference them in, uh, in arrays, okay? Now I wanted to get to the uh, kind of the meat of this in terms of going from scratch to building up a class, okay? Any questions before we go to that? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Click on the pointer project, if you're using Eclipse, click on the pointer project, Go to project, close project. You should always only have one project open at a time in Eclipse. Okay? And then we're just going to quickly create a whole new project, C++ project. Again, it only takes 30 seconds to do. I'm going to call this one fraction underscore project. Okay? Then I'm going to click uh, Linux GCC and next. And then advanced settings. Am I going too fast for anybody in this one? Okay, advanced settings, and then C++ build again, the little arrow next to it rather, and then settings, and you're right, Tufts Wireless is a lot faster now, I don't know, and then Clang++ for the C++ compiler, and then Clang++ for the C++ linker as well, which now it decides to slow down again, of course it does, there we go, all right. Clang plus plus for the linker. Oops. Uh, yes, question. Um, what do you do if you don't have uh, the Linux GCC? Which one? Uh, are you running this on your Windows PC? Uh, what, what, what are your selections? What are your choices? There's only class GCC. 
Are you running it through the homework server or on your PC itself? Uh, go, go ahead with the cross one. That should be fine. Hopefully. Then you won't have to change to Clang++. You won't have to do any of that. Okay. All right. I don't know why this is deciding not to let me type. Of course it's not. Is yours frozen too? Tufts Wireless just went down. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tufts. Perfect timing. Did yours really go down too? Yeah. Oh. Secure is working. I'm not secure. You're on what? And lost it too? It just came back. Oh, mine just came back too. Okay. A little bit of a glitch in the matrix. All right. So I'm going to just click OK and then finish. Great. All right. All right. Now, in Fraction Project, the first thing we're going to create is this thing called a header file. Now, those of you who took C++ know all about header files. And what we can do is we can go File, New, Header File. And I'm just going to type fraction.h. Okay, and then finish. Again, one of the nice things about Eclipse, if you're doing it through Eclipse, is that you get stuff for free when you create a new header file. It creates the file. It uh, opens it up for you, hopefully, and then gives you some details about it that you don't have to type in. All right? And let me make this a little bigger. So what it does is it puts all this boilerplate in here. Don't worry about this stuff, but this stuff has to be in header files, generally. Don't worry about it too much. Just copy it the same way every time. Basically, the name of your class, underscore h, underscore h, <coughs> you're fine. Okay? All right. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to create a fraction class, okay? What does the fraction class do for us? Well, we're going to create a little tiny, like, uh, a little play program to actually manipulate fractions instead of decimals, okay, just to kind of get a feel for what we're doing here. All right, so in this fraction class, how do you create a class? You type class, <laughs> and then curly brace, and it uh, sometimes puts the... Oops, I forgot the name of the class, of course. Let's call it class uppercase fraction. There we go. And if you do that, it will actually, it should, when you put return, put the little semicolon and curly brace in there for you. This is going to be an object which holds stuff. It's going to hold a couple functions. It's going to hold some data for us. And in particular, this is not necessarily the way I would always do it, but I'm going to kind of show you this. We're going to start out and we're going to create a Inside the fraction class, we're going to create a struct called frac, right? And the struct is very similar to a class. It holds stuff. It holds like you can pass it around uh, in various ways. And it holds stuff. In this case, what makes up a fraction? Numerator, numerator and a denominator, right? So I'm going to type, and what types of values are those? They're always integers, right? So we're going to type int num and int denom, like that, and that's our fraction, like frac, yes, uh, of course. classes, do we have to make them public or uh, No, cl good question. Classes themselves are uh, not public or private, and that brings me to a good point. This part should actually be in a section called public. That's a good, very good point. There are of a, the parts of a class are the private parts and the public parts. The public parts are like part of the interface that you can access if you are writing a program from a, uh, if, you're, if you're using this class. You can access all the public parts, like all the um, functions and generally not all of the data. Okay, that's a good point. All right, so let's do this. Let's create, <clears throat> when we create our fraction, we can create two different types of fractions. Let's create what we call a default fraction. What should we make the default fraction numerator denominator be? What is it? Yeah, one over one, good call. Why not zero over zero? Doesn't exist, so let's do that. We are gonna create a what's called a constructor. Now, in C++, constructors are the name of the class, okay? And if you don't pass anything in, you just type the name of the class, Parenthesis, parenthesis, which says we're not passing anything in, and that's the end of it. Okay? And that's our, what we call a default constructor. Now, we're going to fill in the details of that in another file in a second. 
<coughs> let's also pretend we can, or, or let's set it up so that we can create a fraction using a couple of default values that we want, not one and one. So we can do this. We can create another constructor, which says sometimes we might want to use, we might want to create it with a numerator, int num and int denom, like this. And that's uh, another way to, to create a fraction. Okay? We will fill these details in in another, another file. This is basically setting up the interface that we talked about in class today. Okay? All right. After this, um, let's do just one function for right now. Okay? Let's do a function. It's going to be called, it's going to be a void function, which means it's not returning anything to us. It's going to be called the void function, and we're just going to call it uh, print frac. In other words, we're going to tell the computer, oops, parenthesis, parenthesis. We're going to tell the computer how to print this fraction, and that's that. Okay? All right, so that's going to be enough for our public facing stuff right now. The private, the private variables that we're going to care about are going to be our actual fraction for this class that we care about. Each class is only going to have one fraction. I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, let's do this before. Let's change the struct to be uppercase f if you didn't do that. Make an uppercase frac there, and then we're going to say, we're going to take the struct and we're going to call call the variable itself lowercase frac. Now, sometimes in C++ we do this where we use we reuse variable names a lot, and uppercase and lowercase, it gets a little confusing, but you should get used to it because you'll see it fairly often. Okay? <laughs> All right. So here's what our fractions can do so far. They can be created and they can be printed. So far, so good. Okay? Let's do this. Let us save this, control S, and then let's create the associated frac.cpp file. Okay, so go to new, if you're doing it in Eclipse, new uh, source file. <coughs> okay, and then the source file is going to be fraction.cpp for a cpp file. Okay, and this will come up, and it doesn't give us much this time. Okay, it gives us pretty much nothing. Okay. The CPP file needs to know about the interface. Here's how we do that, for those who don't know this. We do this by, we, we include the fraction.h file. So we type not pound sign include the angle bracket. Don't ask me why it's an angle bracket. Well, you can ask me why it's an angle bracket, but later. <laughs> All right, angle bracket, and then we're going to include uh, fraction dot cpp. Oh, I lied to you. It's not the angle bracket. It's actually the, if we, when we do a, a different one, will be angle bracket. Include in quotes fraction dot cpp. So, thank you. Fraction dot h. Yes. Did you ever see the little video that says never type Google into Google because you'll blow up the world? It's a pretty funny video. Not true, by the way. Okay, so fraction .h. So we've now included what we typed before in here. So now we will be able to start building our little class. Okay? We have to create our constructors. Okay? In C++, again, in terms of being kind of annoying, in our class, we have to tell the tell basically the compiler what class we want to use this in, and it's fraction. So we type fraction colon colon which says it's part of this class what is part of this class and Eclipse will give you lots of stuff that you can kind of ignore we are just going to do the first constructor which is like this and this says okay we're using fraction and the fraction class and we are using the fraction we are creating the fraction constructor which is going to give us a uh, numerator and a denominator of one Okay, so in this we're going to create a numerator and denominator of one. So we can type our frac, which is the struct that we created, num equals one, frac denom equals one, and that's it. And that sets it up. This gets called automatically whenever we create a fraction. Okay. This constructor. Okay. The next thing that we're going to create is the other constructor to say, build us a fraction that's 
that is uh, of with values that we want ourselves. Okay, we have to use the same parameters as before. Num int denominator. Okay, same thing with the with the uh, double colon fraction business here. Okay, and then we're going to uh, we're going to actually set our frac dot numerator equal to the numerator and our frac dot denominator equal to the denominator and this is what this is saying is and in C++ the a struct allows you to if we go back we'll go back and look at it in a second allows you to uh, put a value into one of its components with this little dot operator all right, all right. and what was the other function we created the print Print frac, is that it? Void fraction, colon, colon, print frac. And actually, Eclipse is giving me a nice little set, a nice little hint that says, hey, this is probably the one you want, which it is. Like this. Okay. And to print out the fraction, it's going to be really simple. We're going to say, uh, let's do it this way. We're going to say... I was gonna, let's do this instead. Let's go back up here and just do this pound include, and this is where you use angle brackets, IO stream, like that, and then using namespace STD, which again is, is kind of magic, but if we use it, it makes it so we have to type fewer things. Okay. And then in here, we're just going to print out the fraction so let's do this. Let's do C out and the little angle brackets to so that it sends it to it. And we're going to print out um, frac.numerator. And then let's print a slash because that's normally what fractions look like, the slash. And then frac.denominator like that. And then we might as well print a new line on there too. Yeah, there's really no difference that you care about. You can use NL or backslash N. I tend to prefer backslash N because I am come from C where that's where we use all the time. But you can use either. Okay. All right. So that actually, unless I did something wrong, which I probably did, uh, should be our whole program for now. Well, our class for now. Okay. Do we have a main function yet? No. no. Let's do another, quickly do another source file, okay, and we'll call this just main.cpp, which will hold our main function. Okay. <coughs> In main cpp, we also have to pound include, if I can spell right, pound include quote fraction.h. Okay. And we don't want to pound includes the CVP file. That wouldn't actually work for us. You might get lucky in this case, but in general, that won't work. Uh, because header files contain just enough information. The if you if if you end up including the whole file, it will sometimes it will actually try to compile the functions twice. In fact, this case, it wouldn't work actually. You can try it and see. It'll give you errors and say something like fraction or uh, print. It'll say something like print frac defined first here or something. It's trying to compile them twice. It won't. The, the names get overrun. They think there's two of them. Okay. All right. Excuse me. So in this one, we now have a fraction. We're going to just simply put um, int main for our main function. Eclipse is going to be nice and give us a curly bracket. Let's just quickly, so we don't forget, put return zero for the value we're going to give back to the operating system. And then let's create a frac. So we can type fraction, right? I don't know, F1, parenthesis, parenthesis. And that's it. That just created a new fraction for us. It's called F1. And that's it. And now we can do the following. We could say F1 period, right? And let's see, is it going to let us do this? Uh, oh, it's not giving us a, I might have done something wrong. It's not giving us the... Suggest, not giving me the suggestion anyway, so maybe. Yes, question. Uh, do we need to include uh, 
Uh, you can you do have to create it in the previous one because you're going to use it in that one and it, it will it will do that. Yes. Um, hang on. Remove parentheses. Declare a variable. Uh, yeah, I thought you could do it that way. Equals fraction, something like that. Or we could just do for yeah. I think yeah, let's see if that. One <coughs> Sorry? Sorry, say again? Just like that. Is that what you're saying? Just like that? Yeah. You're right. No, you're absolutely right. So that's that. And then what is wrong with this one here? Print frac. Oh, thank you. Print frac. No wonder. Okay. All right. There we go. Now, what happens when I have a cold and can't think straight? Okay. I built that and that works fine now. So we've created a new fraction like this. I believe you can put the parentheses like that, I believe. Let me just try it. I think you could do it the other way. No, maybe not. Maybe not. I thought you could. I think if you do new, you can do that. In this case, let me build it again. If we do this, it should print out when we go ahead and run it 1 over 1 for our fraction. And it's taking its time. And there it is, 1 over 1. Okay, yay, we built it. All right, let's create a fraction that's not the default fraction, right? So what fraction should we create? I don't know, give me a fraction. Two five. Two, five. Okay, let's see. If we do that and then we do f2 dot print, f2 dot print frac, frac. That should now print. Yes, question. If we're not using Eclipse, we want to compile. Yeah, good question. I'll, I'll run through that real quickly. If you're not using Eclipse and you want to compile, and by the way, this did our two fifths fraction just fine. Go to your. Are you in the command, uh, command line? Okay. Um, let's see. Let me find where mine is. Uh, let's see. Is it workspace? I have to figure out where it is. Workspace 2, I believe. Yes, fraction project. And there it is. Okay, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to type clang plus plus, right? Dash O for the output file. Let's call it just fraction, right? And then you'll want to type the, the C, two CPP files, right? So fraction.cpp. You don't type the H files on, the, on this line. You leave them to be included. And main.cpp. And that in typical Unix fashion should not give you anything. <laughs> should just say, okay, here's another prompt. <coughs> the question is, how do you run it? Dot slash fraction should run it. Okay. For Comp 15 class, we generally would type make, right? And I don't have a make file for this, but we would just type make and it would make it for us. So that's easier than doing all those other incantations with the clang plus plus line. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've created a, a class. We've created a header file for that class. We've created the actual functions for the class. Let's create one more function. Okay. What are some things you can do with fractions? You can add them. Adding is a little tricky because you have to have find a common denominator and remember that from like third grade, right? Let's not do that quite yet. If you want to look at the, I actually did build an add one for the, uh, the one online. So if you want to download that and look at it, go ahead. But let's do multiplication because that's easy, right? In our fraction.h, we want to add another public function. We can just do that, okay? Let's do again, make it void, and we'll call it multiply. Or let's see, do I do it to it? Yeah, let's just do it mult. And here's what we're going to do. In our class, we're going to say, Give me another fraction, take that fraction, multiply it by my fraction, and my result, my fraction, will now be that multiplication. Does that make sense what we're doing? We're saying, here's my fraction, you're going to give me another fraction to multiply, and the result is going to be my is going to be what my fraction ends up as. Okay? So we can do this. We can say void mult frac f. 
Okay, we added to the interface. The interface now has a malt function, and we'd better go create it in the CPP file. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to copy this. Control C copies off of the Eclipse from online. And then I'm going to just go paste it over here because I'm going to do most of it again. I'm going to paste it like that. And I'm going to create the function. You have to remember to put the actual function uh, class name in here like that. Fraction, well, frac like that. <laughs> Okay. All right. There's a couple different ways to do this. If you're from the Java programming language, you might not, this might look a little weird. Because these are both fractions that we're dealing, we can do the following thing. Sometimes you can't do that, and you'd actually have to drag the variable out in a different way, but don't stress about that right now. So for here, we're going to type uh, to multiply two fractions. Basically, I'm going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators and store the value in my own fraction, right? So <coughs> my frac dot num equals my frac dot num times f dot num. And you can do this only because it's the same class, as it turns out. Okay? And we're going to say frac dot denominator equals frac dot denominator times f dot denominator. And that's it. Okay. And this will now say, pass in another fraction, multiply the two, and, and the value of the fraction is now, the value of that multiplication is now my result. Okay? Let's test this. Any questions on that before we go on, go on to test it? Let's test. Yes? It passes a different frac. So here's what we do. We've, we're, notice, remember in main, we created two fractions. We have this F1 and F2. Those are both fraction classes. Two fraction classes, F1 and F2. They're both fraction classes. So what we could do now is we could actually, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this. I'll say fraction 1, and I'll make it like 7, 3, right? And if we do this... <coughs> We can now, excuse me, we can now say something like f2 dot malt, and we can pass in f1, right? And it will now multiply those two fractions together. So we've got two different, what we call instances of fraction that are now being used to, uh, you know, with each other. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You don't. Oh, 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 oh. The struct is actually it's it's kind of like another class in itself. It's another way of holding information together. That's all the that's all the frac is or the uh, the struct is. All right. Let's see. What did I do here? Uh, no viable conversion from. Nice thing about Eclipse is it will take me right to the line here. What did I do wrong here? No viable conversion from fraction to fraction frac. Uh, because, let me see, did I do, did we do something wrong here? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> let's see. Um, let's do it this way instead. Let's pass in a whole fraction, oops, instead of just the actual structs. This might be getting what you, getting to what you were talking about here. Instead of passing in that, so we've got to change this in a couple different places. We've got to change it in the header file, so it's going to be a fraction. This is what I get for making all my variables sound the same. We're going to call it multiply. We're going to actually pass in a whole other fraction. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Here's what we have to do here. We actually have to type f.frac.num because that's the name of it there, and f.frac.denominator there because that's the, the actual variable. The reason I did this was to show you structures. It's not necessarily the way I would really do this. What I would probably do, what I would probably do is instead of having a whole fraction structure, I would just make the private variables, the numerator and the denominator. That's probably what I would have done had I done this. Let's try this and see if it compiles properly. Looks like it finally does. 
And let's go back to main and see what we're actually looking at here. So we said a fraction of 7 3, 7 thirds times 2 fifths. We're printing them out and then we're multiplying them and then let's print F2 again because that was the uh, that was the actual where the result is and hopefully 7 thirds times 2 fifths should be 14 fifteenths maybe. Let's see if that works. Yes, I want to change that. There you go, 14 fifteenths there. Okay. All right. So do you kind of see how we would create a class? We would add functions to it and so forth. That was the basics of the, the review. For those of you who haven't done C++ before, hopefully that at least has showed you how it would go from zero up to a running program. Okay. Question, yes. Um, could you explain how you had to do f dot factor? Yeah, good question. So notice what we did here. <laughs> Again, this is a little bit hokey. Inside our fraction, we have another structure which has a numerator and a denominator. That structure is called frac, right? So anytime we want to look at the numerator and the denominator, we have to type the value dot frac to get into the struct dot num. And so in fraction.cpp, what you have to do here is, notice here we've said frac.num because our, our own fraction is a, the struct frac. But when we pass a fraction in, you've got a fraction that has a struct that has a numerator. So it's like two levels of like... Can you pass the struct? Sorry? Can you, just pass the struct? you could pass the struct. Yeah, you could just pass the struct. We could have done this. We could have said just frac and then pass the actual struct. Um, and you could do that too. But again, this was just, I just wanted this to kind of get you to see a few different things about it. Yeah? But then why is it lowercase if we're getting a struct? Because the struct is the opposite. Yeah, good question. Because in a fraction, the variable is called lowercase frac. Okay. Right? You can't, you can't call, like, the struct, this name is only used to name things. You can't say uppercase frac dot num, no, numerator. It doesn't make sense doesn't actually work that way. I know. If I haven't confused you all yet, then my job is not done. Yes? Okay, sorry. I just have one more question. No, no. Hang on. Sorry, yeah. Oh, okay. Fraction dot frac dot num. Is it because you're already in fraction? That's why we can do that, yes. Yeah. Uh, we are already in a fraction class, so we can use that. Now, a better way and more of a what you might call a Java way would be to do something like this. You might type int get numerator, right? And it, what's wrong? Did, did uh, Professor Sheldon tell you not to do this? He might have. Uh, get denominator. And what we could do is we could actually, these would actually return the values of that. And, and I'm going to do re something really sneaky here, right? Which is, uh, which is to say I could do, I could actually do this straight in the .h file if you really want to, you can. Uh, return not ret run, return uh, frac.numerator. And then I could do the exact same thing here. Denominator, return frac.denominator. And this is called inlining. And if you have really short functions like one line, you can do this. Right? What this is saying is now we're going to get the numerator from this. So how would that change our other file, that would change our other file by saying, instead of saying frac.num, we would say uh, f.getNumerator, like that, and f.getDenominator, like that. And that, hopefully it'll work, oops, why did, why did it do that? Killed everything. I don't know. There we go. Okay. So when it, when when you do that, it's the exact same thing. So that's a, just a different way to, to do that. Okay. The getter and a setter. All right. Other questions for us. Uh, kind of. Okay. It's sort of. I for some reason like fraction and frac. Uh, it's like it's saying CO. It doesn't know what CO is. Do you want to take a look under that? Take a look at what it, you might not have. Did you include the? Did you include IO stream in this function or in this file? Uh, yes. Okay. 
That may be it. I'm not sure. I bet Vivek can probably figure it out. Right? When you did what? Ah, when you did not have it included in the CD. Okay. All right. Yes. My thought is not using the Yes. It's a uh, suggested file on the top, and if you go to it, like, nothing is got, like, include is not purple, for example. Oh, so interesting. It, but it's still working. Is it underneath the fraction project? It's, it's underneath that. Uh, it's, like, indented a little bit there? Yeah. Yeah? And when you, so, yeah, close it and then click on it again? Uh, not that one. Click on, oops, uh-oh. I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. Other questions? Yes. So you can actually write all the functions in the header file. Well, okay. So you 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 aren't you really should not write all the functions in the header file. Okay? You could technically do that. It would be bad practice. You would not want to do that. We would probably we would take off points if you started seeing lots of long like long functions in your header file. If you have a one liner, that's okay. Don't do it for more than one line. Okay? If you can fit it on the same line, you could do it. Other questions? Okay, here's what I'd like to do. Why don't I do this? Why don't I stop where it is, where we are. I, we can go around and, ask, and you can ask any other questions. Um, does anybody have anything else in particular they wanted to get that you think the, the whole class might want to know as well? Like in other words, do you have anything that you've been thinking about that you don't understand at this point? Um, what exactly does provide provide? Like when you do make provide, what, what is that doing? I don't <laughs> yeah, good question. Let me let me demonstrate it for you. Uh, I have a separate test account here to do this. Okay, so when you go into your CD homework one, well, there we go. When you go into your, uh, you've got all your files there, right? <coughs> you've got the make file. If you have the make file here, it's going to have all these things and. What it's going to do is provide is going to say take is going to take all of your files, send them into the homework server in a particular location so that we can grade them. That's all it's doing. Well, it's doing that and then it's testing them all as well. Okay, so watch this. If I type clear and then type uh, make provide, actually, I think I still have the mistake from earlier. Let me fix that really quickly. Uh, let's start with right at CPP. Yep, let me. If you were in class today, you would have noticed that I took out the delete. Now it's back. Make, and let's try it. Make, provide. Okay, so what did, have you tried make, provide yet? Have you done it? No. Okay, all, all you have to do is type make, provide, and it runs the command for you. Do it in the folder that you are, your files are in. Okay, it will, it will say, here's the files we are going to submit. Right? And check, <laughs> check those and make sure it's got everything in there. Right? So, for instance, your readme.md file, that should be there, and so on. Okay? And it will tell you how many submissions it is. I allow you like 100, so don't worry about that. And then, are you ready to provide? And you type yes. And what it will start doing is it will copy all the files, and then it will start running all the tests. And you can see it running the test, and it will say, in my case, test passed. Right? And it will keep saying that for all of them. And if it fails, it will – thanks for coming. We'll see you later. If it if it fails, it will uh, tell you that too. So let's we'll put a bug in there and I'll show you what it tells you. Okay. Boris, question or are you? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. When it's when it's done here, hopefully what you want to see is all tests passed, right? That's what you want to see. If you don't, <coughs> you can excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. You can uh, resubmit it or reprovide it once you change your change file. So let's put a. Uh, problem in here. Vim, uh, let's see, list, dynamic array, CPP, and let's put something in here that says, for instance, uh, let's see, we'll change something you might have had to write mm, like this. Cards i equals cards i minus 1. Let's say that I actually did just cards i equals cards i. I don't know. We're, we're running through the thing, and I made a mistake, and that's going to do it. So I, hope, I think that should produce bogus output. I can actually try running it there. and 
That looks reasonable, actually. Hmm. Okay, maybe it didn't. <laughs> maybe it didn't do that. But let's do make provide and let's see. Yes, I want to provide it. Okay, all right. There we go. So you see the. I'll stop it here. Uh, you can. Oh, if you hit Control C, it will actually stop doing the testing. But see it here. It says testing creates a hand, fills the hand with this, and prints it. Main one pass. That was great. Second one tests the insert at head method. Well, we just must have changed something that screws that up. And it says, oh, that failed. Here's the program we used to test it. <laughs> right? And so then you can copy that whole program if you want into your own program and test it and, and see what's going on and then debug it from there. Okay? That's what it does. And then at the end, it'll tell you uh, that some something failed. I don't know. <laughs> that is wacky. Okay. There we go. But it's describing the source file. <coughs> it's just what? Yeah. It's grabbing the source files. That's all. Yep. Yep. So. It also tells you uh, what the expected is supposed to be. So it'll tell you exactly what your differences are. And if Very your differences good point. are blank, you probably have extra spaces or end ups. Yeah, if you, it looks like you don't have any differences, you might have you might have added an extra space somewhere. This won't happen for this project because you don't actually print anything yourself. <laughs> but what's that? Or it might be uppercase or something, yeah. So this says test and failed, main two. Then it tells you which one failed. And you can go back and check. And if you just go up uh, and go back up, uh, as Vivek said, it says, here's the output. The expected output was 9C, 2C, 5S, T, H, A, D. Your output was 9C, A, C, A, C, A, C, A, C. Right, we copied it wrong, right? The difference is this diff file, we'll talk about this a little later in class. The difference says, hey, what's different about yours and mine? And it kind of gives you a little more information about that. Okay? Yeah. All right. Other questions? Okay. All right. So let's let's call it there for the main class. I'm happy to sit around for another uh, half an hour, hour or so, and uh, help out if you, uh, if you want to have any other questions. Sound good? All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>